This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. How is everybody doing today? Happy Saturday to you all! We're continuing the Fruit of Grisea today, and I don't really know what's in store because this game thus far has just been a bunch of mini skits involving all of the characters, which I actually, I kind of like that. I like these little, like, slice-of-life stories, even if I could do without some of the content. But regardless of that, I'm still enjoying this game. It does have some really interesting characters, and I like the action scenes, so let's keep going. Load the save. Yes, the precious pouch is apparently next. Perhaps that's the t title of the skit. There's an old proverb. Once free women gather, things get noisy. It happens to be a lie. Truth of the matter is, one woman is enough for fiends to get noisy. Females are capable of holding a lengthy conversation with a wall. Get free such creatures together, and you're solidly beyond noisy and into migraine-inducing. Um, it looks like there's a little bit of text down there that isn't showing up. Also, that's kind of sexist. I know some guys that are plenty loud without needing to be girls. A conversation between men is a very efficient thing. Step one, both sides communicate their business. There is no step two. With women, it's a different story. Before they get to the point, the conversation will be diverted onto the subject of dieting, which then develops into a chat about cosmetics. This this guy is definitely very misogynistic. From there, the topic will shift to TV programs, then celebrities, perhaps followed by an exchange of opinions on popular sweets. After a stopover at the old standby, love gossip, fiends will come full circle to more dieting talk. I mean, girls talk to build connections, guys generally talk to accomplish something. That is, that is generally how it is. Whatever the original point of the conversation may have been, it's buried under the bewildered, the bewildering blizzard of topics, never to be seen again. Then again, maybe I'm just looking at this the wrong way. It seems entirely plausible that female conversation is pointless by design. Of course, I'm something of a magnanimous spirit, so I do my best to endure these unproductive chats when necessary. But there comes an end to every limit. Once my tolerance is exceeded, my usual coping method is to shut down my brain, then repeat, I see, amazing, and not your fault every time I sense a pause in the verbal onslaught. In many cases, this proves sufficient. That's, that is going to backfire real bad in this skit, won't it? On one memorable occasion, I weathered a conversation with a woman for a good four hours using nothing but these free phases. Free, these free phrases. There are definitely people where that'll work for. I may or may not know them. Uh, hi, Sachi. Why Why is the, the her face bored out so we can only see her torso? I see. Amazing. Oh boy, what just happened? Not your fault. Unfortunately, there are also times when my strategy doesn't work out so well. You think? <laughs> <laughs> I don't like how Yuji is blurring out their faces so he only is looking at their chests. Hmm? There we go. Hey, Michiru! He absolutely was. What a ridiculous accusation. I was listening to every word. Busted. Let's see. Something about how Sachi hates pickles? Or was it parsley? <laughs> Very true, Michiru's got us good. Seems my concentration may have slipped ever so slightly, probably because I got cut so caught up in reading that new novel last night. I hadn't noticed during my morning training routine, but apparently I didn't get enough sleep. Must have flipped the mental kill switch without even realizing it. I force my brain out of hibernation mode and stare Michiru in the eyes. Alright. Honestly, I wasn't paying attention in the slightest. Therefore, I have no idea whatsoever as to what that conversation was about. Not even a shred of a clue. You got a problem with that? No, but I have a feeling that Yuji will have a problem with it pretty shortly. All I remember of that discussion was some pointless small talk at the beginning. Hardly a big deal if I did space out. Crying? <laughs> I have a feeling Yuji would never come crying to you. It's embarrassing? What? Sorry, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> hmm, this might be trouble. 
Yuji, now's your chance to just back out of the grave you dug for yourself. Yeah, about that. Uh, what are you talking about? Uh, yeah, very true. Gotta have sufficient length. Is she, like, going to buy us a new shirt or something? Oh, right, wouldn't be usable. <laughs> I do- that's a cute face of Sachi- Sachi's. With her customary finesse, Sachi takes my measurements. The skillful, efficient movements of her hands remind me of a maid gracefully pouring tea. Her refined motions possess something of a special charm unique to the work of true artisans. Truly impressive. Can I ask one question? You're measuring for the length of... what, exactly? The strap, eh? Probably not a shirt. Alright, show me what you can do. I expect precision to the millimeter. <laughs> a shark pouch sounds pretty awesome, actually. <laughs> Sachi! Hold on! Wait! Sachi! Sachi trots off oblivious. My voice doesn't even seem to register. As I find myself alone, the gravity of the situation at last begins to sink in. A shark pouch? That will look perfect on me? Dude, sharks are awesome. Like... <laughs> what do you mean? By shark pouch? She's presumably referring to something like that vaguely fish-shaped fanny pack Michiru's always wearing. Oh! We get a matching one. If we accept the pouch, do we go on Michiru's route? Okay, that much I understand. But... One that will look perfect on me? What exactly is that supposed to mean? I slowly, carefully draw out my vague memories of the conversation I sleepwalked through earlier. A cool draft of air was flowing into the hallway through an open window, refreshing as a mountain breeze after a long hike. We're actually getting a flashback from like five minutes ago. As I walked down the corridor, lost in my thoughts, I was surprised by an agitated yelp. It was reminiscent of the high-pitched shrieks emitted by cartoon animals back in the earliest days of sound films. I moved to confirm the situation, prepared for the remote possibility of an emergency. Instead, I found Michiru sprawled out on all fours, her face planted on the ground. Apparently, she was cleaning the floor with her ton. How admirable. Hmm, a face mop, eh? That brings back memories. I had to clean a few hallways this way myself back in my old school. What kind of... Oh yeah, army. That's why. <laughs> Y Yuji has more than just a few screws loose. What kind of person would see someone on all fours, like, a face planted on the ground and be like, Mmm, mopping the floor with your face, eh? Good for you! When I looked down, a number of canisters were strewn all over the floor. They resembled Michiru's containers of ramen candy. Apparently this wasn't an attempt at cleaning after all. They must have fallen out of her shark pouch when she fell. In an attempt to be polite, I bend over to help her pick them up, but Michiru hurriedly snatches the nearest canister away from my hand. How big are these canisters? I'm picturing, like, canisters of helium that you fill up balloons with, which are, like, massive. Hmm, if you say so. Oh, oh, is she wearing a shark pouch? That's like a pink one. I, that doesn't look like a shark. Oh, hey, Sachi, were you just eavesdropping? Sure, Sachi. Oh man, I wish I knew how to repair zippers, because that's often like, if something of, if a piece of clothing of mine breaks, it's usually if the zipper has broken, and I can't fix it. That doesn't look like a shark. Sharks aren't pink. Yeah, it's cute. Michiru has reached the pinnacle of shark chic. <laughs> Trey chic. Now that I think about it, by this point I was already mostly tuned out of the conversation. 
Once a female speaks the word cute, in most cases the discussion is going to get painfully lengthy and repetitive. Combined with my drowsiness from insufficient sleep, this instinctive judgment quickly sent my mind into hibernation mode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I freaking love Michiru's smile like that. It's so great. <laughs> I see. Aw, Sachi's so nice. Amazing. Except when she was bullying Michiru last stream. And here Michiru is actually trying to help us out. You know what? I've decided. Michiru is a real winner. Like, <laughs> I know she's not the brightest, and I know she has that dumb Sundere facade, but I think underneath that she's like, she's a good person. Not your fault. Well, I mean, as good of a person as you can be. We're all sinners, but... You know, I think she I think she has good intentions. But make it, like, a cool shark pouch, not a cute one. <laughs> Dane, actually, you know what? Michiru is pretty perceptive. I think she's actually brighter than she thinks. <laughs> Actually, Sachi, here's the thing. I see. That doesn't mean yes. Yeesh. Please don't. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> no man, Mitra is actually great. She's she's trying to help us out, but failing because we're just not paying attention. Not your fault. I don't think he does. I see. <laughs> I do really like this pose of Sachi's. It, it's very good. Amazing. Have we seen her in this pose in, like, the maid outfit? I don't think we have. Not your fault. Hmm. Somehow it seems the conversation concluded with me sentenced to wear a sparkly shark fanny pack at all times. I gently close my eyes and imagine the result. <laughs> oh, what a dope. <laughs> what a dopey man. That is, that is amazing. A sparkly lifestyle. As they say in Hollywood, a life of glitter. Although I can picture this scene without difficulty, accepting it proves beyond my capabilities. Sachi! Sachi! <laughs> Swag. <laughs> What's up, Goris? <laughs> I'm gonna say, he, I bet he could pull it off. I feel like Yuji is one of those people who, like, he could wear a pink shark fanny pack and still look cool while doing it. Emergency situation. Sorry for the sudden notice, but I need to withdraw my previous request. Discontinue the production process. I'm talking about the pouch. You remember, right? Hey, no, fanny packs aren't ugly. That that's mean. He can pull it off. You completed half of the shark pouch in the span of five minutes? What the heck, Sachi? You work fast? Every time the word shark pouch leaves Sachi's mouth, her expression becomes dazed and dreamy. The girl's gotten herself all fired up for some reason. I've got to do something and quick. Hey, Collins, what's up? Uh, I generally stream Grisea for two hours, and I only just started, so I'll probably be done at around 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is like an hour 45 minutes from now. Nice to see you, though. 
<laughs> See, Sachi, I don't know. A shark pouch, I feel like he could wear it and still look okay, but his, his coolness factor would definitely tank. Oh, you gotta learn to say no. Uh, right. If the fiends already have finished, I can hardly admit that I simply wasn't paying attention to the conversation. She has only been working for five minutes. It's fine. In the field, even a momentary lapse of judgment can be enough to trap you in a hopeless situation. I've seen people die for their carelessness before my eyes. A few thoughtless steps, a small sound drowned out by the buzzing of insects, a single stray bullet. Such fiends can sometimes change the fate of the world. I should know all too well. And yet, look at me now. Cold sweat trickles down my armpits as I speak. A shark, eh? A shark, is it? Hi, Same-san desu. Could you make it a crocodile instead? Crocodiles are cooler. Figures, I was hoping to buy some time with an unreasonable demand, but we're dealing with Sachi here. A design change like that doesn't even phase her. Sorry, Sachi. Forget about the crocodile as well. Her preparations for changing the coloration from a shark to a crocodile were proceeding far too quickly. I can't underestimate her skills. I've got to pick an animal difficult enough to throw her for a loop and slow down the production process. Which would mean... I've got it, Sachi! What we need here, just just tell her that you, you weren't paying attention, is a bush dog. A what? A what? <laughs> Thank you for the exposition, Sachi. I desperately needed it. I do indeed. Think you can handle it? Sachi twists her face in apparent frustration, just as I'd hoped. Even with her determined spirit, making a motif from such an unfamiliar animal should require some time-consuming work. Alright, carefully collect your reference materials. Proceed slowly but surely. Nice and slowly, understood? Let's have your initial report on the estimated time to completion. Through heroic effort, I managed to swallow the words, That's too damn fast! before they leave my mouth. I see. You think it'll go that smoothly, eh? Dane, Sachi's going places in her life. Seems the bush dog was too easy. If I had gone with the golden lion tamarin, I might have bought myself a few more minutes. Damn it! I chose poorly! Damn it! <laughs> Yeah, she's right. <laughs> she's absolutely right. Silence! What's the point of passing judgment on history from a position of hindsight? At that time, under those circumstances, I made the best decisions that I could. No, you didn't. <laughs> Ouch! Damn it! Damn it all! <laughs> Ugh, yes, perhaps you're right. <sighs> my apologies. I overreacted. Thanks to Michiru's words, I guess quickly regained my composure. It seems my lack of sleep may have made me overly irritable. Just as she says, if I think about the matter rationally, there's hardly any reason to make such a fuss over a mere rhinestone-covered shark pouch. The mature fiend is to politely accept my sparkly fate. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I got owned by Michiru for sure. On second thought, I'd rather die! Come on, Yuji, stop being a drama queen. Ah! Adequate sleep! Adequate sleep is gravely important! Oh, hey, Makina. <laughs> Makina, you wouldn't have any use for a bush dog pouch, would you? <laughs> oh, wait, that wouldn't work. Sachi would see she's wearing it, not us, and be like, hey, what up? <laughs> this is the first time I've seen Yuji completely lose it, actually. <laughs> As she speaks, Makina picks up a pebble from the hallway floor and offers it to me. I accept it with a curt yeah and hurl it into the distance with one swoop movement. <laughs> Silence! Please! I really, truly need you to stop talking for a while. Please don't say train. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love it when they speak English. It's so good. 
Nobody was discussing locomotives. Your English is terrible. Also, you need to shut up. Wow! <laughs> Rude! <laughs> her, her English was... Wait. Please don't say train. That wasn't that bad. I mean, she pronounced please, please, but I mean, hey, that's just a di that's just an accent and a dialect theme. I thought her English was actually pretty good. Mew? Mew? <laughs> oh man. True, when you get down to it, this is my fault. Seems I have no choice but to accept the consequences. <laughs> that was way less than 20 minutes! <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, Prince Dusk, we're, we're... Yuji just accidentally agreed to wear a bush dog pouch around, and he's trying to get a finger out a way out of it. <laughs> Jeez, Sachi, did you run a marathon? <laughs> Deep breaths. Although she's completely out of breath, Sachi's face is filled with the joy of victory. She thrusts out her hand, offering me a pouch recognizably modeled after a bush dog. Pretty impressive accuracy for such an off-the-cuff work, actually. Good work. Impressive. I wasn't expecting you to finish the job so quickly. Sharks are the state? <laughs> I am the state. Oh boy. I turn the pouch over in my hand. It seems to be constructed from heavy-duty waterproof nylon. Usable even in heavy, rainy weather. In order to express the distinctive coat of the bush dog, Sachi's made use of a fabric with a chocolate chip pattern. The chocolate chip design is more familiar as a camouflage pattern in desert regions, but it's well suited to the purpose. I'm honestly fairly impressed with her creative choice. And yet, as if to intentionally shatter the otherwise clever design, sparkling rhinestones are scattered all across the pouch's surface. Oh boy, that's a little... that's bad. The sheer glitter power of this fiend is overwhelming. I feel a little dizzy just looking at it. Hey, Sachi. How did she make this in 10 minutes? Oh, man. Wouldn't it be funny if Sachi knew we weren't paying attention and is doing all of this just to make us feel bad? I... I see. I steal my nerves and prepare to face my cruel, sparkly fate. Ugh, if only I'd gotten adequate sleep. But in the next movement, the situation changes abruptly. Michiru approaches briskly, snatches the pouch from my hands, and dangles it in front of Makina. Is she going to save us? <laughs> oh my gosh, Michiru is actually going to try to save our butts. Oh, Dane! How about she takes the shiny bits and we keep the fanny pack, because it's actually well constructed. With a subtle motion too small for Makina to consciously notice, Michiru draws the pouch back toward herself. The action triggers Makina's subconscious instinct for the chase, firmly hooking her interest on the bush dog pouch. Oh my gosh, it actually is going to work. At Makina's words, I grab Sachi's shoulders and stare intensely into her eyes. <laughs> this is... this is not a good picture right here. Sachi, my friend, you heard the girl. This fiend's hella shiny. I want it. Unless you give me this pouch, I don't know what it will become of me. I'm afraid I can no longer live without it. What passion. My heart has been moved. On that note, I know I was originally scheduled to receive this, but I think that Makina may be more deserving of the being the recipient. It may even look better on her than it would on me. What do you think? So, so this <laughs> I made you a new shark pouch, and it plays Baby Shark every time you open it. No! <laughs> wow, Michiru is amazing. 
<laughs> um, Sachi, most people don't even know what a bush dog is. Also, Sachi's getting legit ma mad. This is interesting. Oh, that's kind of cute. <laughs> Nothing else matters. It's only those. <laughs> Certain dogs are better than others. <laughs> yeah, we have to make sure Sachi doesn't make another pouch for us. Sachi, can you find it in your heart to give it to our young animal lover here? I think it would be the best thing for the pouch. <laughs> Next, Makina is going to get a Michiru pouch, and that's going to look weird. Whoops. I, I bet you Makina is just going to pick all of the sequins or jewels or whatever is on them and then throw the bush dog pouch in the trash. <laughs> Does it talk? How did you do this? Like, how do you just have the materials to do this? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Makina is the type of girl who, if she got, like, the toy that you push the button and it barks, she would just mash the button all the time. What? <laughs> you know, guys, I'm beginning to think this game might not be entirely realistic. <laughs> the animal sounds in this game are not good. Oh no. <laughs> that was really, really good! <laughs> I love that effect where, like, we have our internal monologue and then it slowly gets quieter between them. That's, that's so good! Yes, Prince Dusk, this was a spur of the moment project she made in, like, the span of 10 minutes. Makina and Sachi wander off somewhere, grasping the sparkling bush dog pouch in their hands. Left behind, Michiru and I find each other's eyes, and we heave simultaneous sighs of relief. Man, Michiru just was a boss here. Hmm, excellent work. I definitely owe you one. Huh? Wow, Michiru being modest? What happened to you? No need to play dumb. I know you orchestrated this conclusion. You called Makina over so you could press that pouch on her. Huh. I'm seeing a new side to her. I, I like this. Can you define orchestrated? <laughs> That's the literal definition. <laughs> Whatever. Either way, I owe you one. From now on, I'll be paying at least a little attention to any conversation, no matter how incredibly pointless. I wonder if she's just... Nah, I'll keep my theories to myself. Otherwise, there's no telling when I'll get caught up in the something ridiculous again. Uh, Mitra's root is hardest to suspend disbelief on. It gets into a bit... Oh, okay. I mean, I played Clonade, and that game definitely had fantasy elements to it, so... I'll go in being prepared. If it's something really stupid, then... I'll probably have some words to say about it, but I'll try to keep an open mind. Sounds like you're describing yourself. If a sundere honestly admits they're a sundere, they stop being a sundere. Think of it this way. A woman says everyone on her island tells nothing but lies. If it's true, the woman is a liar. But if she's a liar, what she says can't be true. Same thing applies here. No, not not quite. 
I can't tell if she's actually just very dumb or if she's just putting on a fake I'm dumb facade. No spoilers. I'm just, I'm wondering, because what she did just there where she, like, passed the pouch on to Machina, that was slick. And that was, like, genuinely, like, really well done and required a degree of, like, foreknowledge and wit to do that. And now she's trying to pass it off like it's nothing. Now you're just talking about an animal giving birth. Are you looking to become a veterinarian? I'm trying to think what Michiru would do as a job. There was no testing involved. You managed to get yourself completely confused just fine without my help. Specifically, you started talking about things that you don't understand and lost track of the conversation entirely. Do not judge the rest of the roots on it if you do it first. Alright, so... Uh, I'm planning on doing Sachi's route first and then Michiru's route, and those might be the only two routes I do. Right now, like, the one route that I would cut out would be the Machina route. I'm not a fan of Machina, and if it's a romance route, that I feel like that would be really icky. I also am not a huge fan of Amine. I might do Yumiko's route. That, Yumiko is growing on me. Like, she started us the worst because she tried to murder us, but she's actually a very interesting character, so... I, I, I don't think I'll be doing all of the roots on this. Or if I do, I'll spread them out. <laughs> Neither Schrodinger nor, nor Freud have anything to do with this. You're trying too hard. Stick to nice small words. Natural talent for understanding how to deal with people but laugh. Oh, yeah, I could see that. Like, she's good with people and, like, emotionally intelligent, but maybe not, like, intellectually intelligent. That, yeah, that could be. Um, Gorus, no, I don't want the thematic directions. I'm going to try to go into these blind. Yes, I'm aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that face will never not make me laugh. Um. Michiru takes a handful of ramen candies from her pouch and munches down on them vigorously. I know women are always saying they have a separate stomach for sweets, <laughs> but isn't this daily intake of junk food bad for her? Or is this some sort of stress relief? Seems to me that like it's a coping strategy like that, and it would just get you caught in a vicious cycle of candy-coated, bloated misery. <sighs> you know, no matter how much glucose you take in, it's not going to increase your basic potential for action. It's certainly necessary as energy for your brain, but considering your presumably modern and clearly unhealthy diet, there's no need to get out of your way to take more. Junk food like that is basically pure sugar, just so you know. Hmm. If you're that fond of them, let me try one. <laughs> yeah, come on. People can offer you food, but you don't take other people's food. <laughs> Is there a word in the thesaurus for someone who eats way too much cake? <laughs> you what? Wait for I think you may have gotten there from homeless, but the nuance is actually pretty different. I think I might have mentioned this, but your English really needs work. If she's not moving to an English-speaking country, she don't need to take English. Oh, a reasonably polite, polite farewell for once. Actually, I think English is compulsory for Japanese schools. Got it. See you later. She also might be a little bipolar. It's difficult for me to determine whether this girl is basically a somewhat considerate person, or just an utter idiot who occasionally stumbles her way into acts of kindness. But either way, she's incredibly noisy. From experience, I know that there are essentially two types of women in the world. You have your noisy women, and then you have your even noisier women. And we men must manage as best we can in this cruel world. <sighs> there is a quick and efficient way of shutting a woman up. Namely, sealing her lips. But sadly, this comes with its own set of complications. Life's no picnic. I think I'll be going to bed early tonight. <laughs>